Good evening, and welcome to the Writer's Block. I'm your host, John Ronan, and as you know now, because we are in our 29th year, I talk to writers and other creative artists about their craft, what they've accomplished in the past, what they're working on, what they're planning for the future. It's a wide net, so if you have an idea for a guest who's good for the writer, writer's block, a talented writer or other brand of creative person, you watch for our address at the end of the show and we'd be very happy to get your suggestions. I also want to remind you that the Writer's Block and the other original programs that come out of 1623 Studios are a result of cable access television. That's cable access television. You don't get this valuable Cape Ann service with DISH. So you stick with cable and watch the Writer's Block and our other programming. Tonight I have a surprise for you. A couple of guests who are teachers, and I've had in mind for a long time to have a couple teachers on because it's the most important occupation in America. They are the people who inspire students to read and write and investigate science or math, whatever their specialty is. The two teachers we have with us this, more, uh, this, this evening are Teresa Danaher and Catherine Crosby, who are Middle school, middle school teachers at the O'Malley Innovation Middle School. Teresa Danaher is originally from Wilmington, North Carolina, and attended the University of Wilmington, although for her graduate work, she came north to Salem State and stayed north. Not originally as a teacher, she was in business working for AT&T for a number of years, she gave me the number, but I don't remember it. Uh, and she's, but she's been teaching for 18 years and uh, since 2001 and now teaches, as I mentioned, at the O'Malley School here in Gloucester. Our second guest is Catherine Crosby. She is from Massachusetts. She was raised in Weymouth and then went to Fontbonne, Fontbonne. Fontbonne uh, Academy and then later to college uh, in Connecticut at Sacred Heart, where she mentioned before the show, Bobby Valentine is a, <laughs> uh, is a, uh, a faculty member. Uh, she's been teaching uh, for three years, all three of those years at O'Malley, and she teaches English, writing, and the language arts, as does Teresa Danaher. Teresa and Katie, welcome to the Hi. Writer's Block. Thank you very much for coming over. I know you taught all day, yeah. and then you had a meeting, so I really appreciate your energy and time. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you. I meant sincerely what I said about teaching being the most important occupation in America. I taught for 30 years, so yeah. I believe it. Uh, what's the biggest obstacle to your creative work with children that you face today? I'll start with you, Teresa. The obstacle um, in the classroom, because I'm not going to go all the way out, because um, there's so many other facets um, that can be enhancing and, and be obstacles for our profession. But um, I would say just keeping that unengaged student engaged, bringing them in, um, knowing what the hook is, because there's so many different levels of learners that we have. Um, we have an inclusion um, classroom in all areas, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, in all contents. Um, inclusion meaning that we could have uh, kids who are challenged in reading, writing, math, anything, um, processing, to get that type of student to be able to engage themselves, you have to be an entertainer um, you have to be, um, you have to be very much aware of who that student is to make the connection, and that's the biggest challenge and obstacle. Yeah. yeah. So, Katie, how, what, do, what do you think is the biggest? Uh, I agree. The biggest, the biggest challenge. In I agree teaching? that that is definitely an obstacle. I also think that um, middle school, especially, which is where we teach. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know I struggled with it too. Coming into middle school, you don't have a lot of confidence. You're not 
um, necessarily willing to put yourself out there and to put forth the best work you can always put forth I think because of self-doubt and mm -hmm. you know it just it's a tough time to be in middle school it's a tough yeah. time for elementary school and high school yeah. too and college you know you're figuring out who you are and it's it's tough yeah. being in the classroom and and learning and, and doing your best and and not letting the outside yeah get for to kids you. remind me what the age group is in middle school so what 10 yeah 11, 10, 7th 11. grade we both are 7th grade teachers right. so we're dealing sometimes with 11 year olds but and it's 12. normally 12 and 13 right. they're progressing so going 11, into the 11 teen to 13 years. Years. yeah, yeah. Right. right yeah 13 14 almost yeah. too yeah depending on where their birthdays are right right exactly, right. exactly. Exactly, and it's just, it's a tough time a for kids time. to be kids. Yeah, <laughs> It's really tough. You're figuring out who you are, and then you are you have everyone around you who's, I don't know, going through different things too. Different outside stuff, mm -hmm. home lives, and it's tough when you're in the classroom, you might be f thinking about what's going on at home, and you're not really focused on, I'm gonna write a poem right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah. On demand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't meet a lot of people who are walking around waiting to get home to write poetry. <laughs> Uh, there, are few, though. there are a yeah, few, though. There are a few. Some of our students are them. There are, yeah, so. there, there are a few. Yeah. Uh, a, a related question, and I remember this from my uh, my own teaching, uh, was competing f for their attention and their brains with social media. Yeah, and sure. I, I would say you, all the phones have to be off. Yes. And some of them would not be. Exactly. They would answer their phones <laughs> yep. in the middle of the class, mm -hmm. sometimes get up and start to walk oh, yeah. out. Exactly. Uh, are those particular problems or other social media related uh, challenges uh, real present? And I'll start with you, uh, Katie. Mm -hmm. I, would. I would say definitely. I know that our school specifically has a no phone on you in the school building policy. So you can have it in your locker or you can put it with um, a teacher in like a locked closet. Um, so they should never be on them, but of course, I mean, they're middle schoolers. Of course yeah. they're gonna keep it in their locker. They're gonna go to the bathroom and go text <laughs> someone. And I think the other thing with social media that's difficult too is they go home and that's a place for cyber bullying yeah. Yeah. and then that comes back into school. Yeah. You know, uh, you have the kids that are like traumatized from what they saw online because people are picking on them yeah. or, you know, anything I, like that. You have the same problems in, in your classes, oh, Teresa? Oh, absolutely. We're on the same level of what the kids are doing, and it's, you know, it's it's like a magnet for them. Mm -hmm. They can't live without it. Exactly. Um, we had a challenge uh, a few weeks back. We had to um, dismiss kids so they couldn't come back into the building. I, I don't know if you heard about it. Um, the lightning had struck and we lost electricity, we were at a brownout, the generators kicked on, but the fire department said it really wasn't safe to get back in until we, they knew exactly what the situation was. Mm -hmm. The teachers were able to get back in because I need keys to my house and my right, car. So we went in and came right back out. We couldn't allow 700 kids to go back in and, and try to get everything. It would have been too much right. of a process. So the yeah. kids were, they were told to leave everything. I mean, I walked into my classroom and it looked like a ghost town. Everything, the kids literally dropped everything. Yeah, when the fire, out. Yeah, the fire alarm went off and we went out. They had to leave their phones. And, you know, some of the kids were very upset. Yeah. When they came in the next day, though, um, it was kind of interesting when I said, how, how did it feel without the phones? They're like, oh, you know, it, it was like the shock first. Yeah. And then they didn't have it for the rest of the evening. And they kind of dealt with it. And then they didn't have it for the rest of the school day either. Right. They came in and yeah. stayed in the closets or their lockers. So they're better off for, for well, having I, a little... I, I think, yeah, I think little, they dealt with it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, they pushed There was a withdrawal, through. but then oh I my gosh, they dealt yeah. with it. <laughs> my yeah, brother lives happen. near the high school and he watches the cars leave yeah. often. He says every one of the kids Taxi. who drives away is on the phone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Every yeah. single one, because yeah. that's where they live. Yeah, the, they yeah. do. And I try to, in my classroom, I try to emphasize to them that I'm not on social media. I mean, Katie's trying to get me on Snapchat. <laughs> I'm not very good at that. And But I, I have a website. Uh, we all have websites right. at school as mm -hmm. teachers. That is my pretty much my limit for social media. I'm, I tried Facebook years ago when it first came out. It just took up too much of my time. Yeah. And I was hearing from a lot of people that was really nice that I hadn't heard from in a while, but it was like, 
okay, consuming. this is too much. Yeah. It's time so I just disconnected that. I started out going yeah. home with Facebook, yeah. and now it, I just it, yeah. You know delete, what? Delete, 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 delete. It can be it good for it, yeah, figuring it a, out like yep. any current events. Yep. Or like, sometimes you'll hear about something going on before you even have a chance to watch the news, and you might right. figure it out through Facebook or Twitter. Or, it has its advantages but, as long as it's not. But it, yeah, it's right. a, there's a lot of negatives right. too. I was, yeah. I was interested in, in, in starting out with asking you about a couple of challenges because I know you you have serious challenges, but mm -hmm. I know that you're both successful in getting across and beating those challenges because you brought some poetry mm -hmm. <laughs> that students wrote under your yeah. supervision yeah. and in class. Can you tell us about? And that means you're you're beating those challenges. You're you're, you're successful. Can you tell us about? Uh, Teresa, can you start on this? Tell us about that poem you brought okay. and success. Okay. This, uh, this was from last year, and I want to say it was great because when Principal Lucy retired and then when Principal Beatty came in, we gave them a collection from our house, Dirigo House, a collection of the poems that the kids wrote, and the poems are where I'm from. And we gave them a few models but I'd like to read if the, 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 the theme of the poem. The theme of the poem where, is where, where I'm from. Where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And they could run with it any way they wanted. It doesn't have to necessarily be about Gloucester. Yeah. It can be what they think. Where of they're them. inside, where yeah. they're coming from inside. And as yeah. Katie said, you've got these kids who are going through a lot of things right now. Mm -hmm. Some Sometimes. just, you know, hormonal, some, oh my gosh, the pressures of sports and right. extracurricular yeah. and academics and whatever. So we modeled a few. Um, and then we let them kind of go carte blanche. And we had templates. Some of the kids used them. Some of the kids just said, I just want to do it on my mm -hmm. own. Can I read one? Please. Please. Okay, thank you. Um, I am from blood, sweat, and tears, from scars and love. I am from the bumpy roads and cracked doors, loud voices, hitting bags. I am from the Venus flytrap, the insect eater. Not from a sunflower. I am from tiring and exhaustion, from Kirk and Linda. I am from the athletic and right-handed family, from you will go through tough times once in a while, and from come and eat dinner. I am from Jesus on the cross, and from the oldest book. I am from Bulgaria and Native American, from fried chicken and pizza. <laughs> It, there, it, there, that's that, that's that's good writing. You know, it that, is. Uh, I I mentioned to the poetry without paper yep. winners when they're here that I uh, I'm always surprised, although I should be at my age, that the students aren't writing about flowers and no. Disneyland and uh, the soft kind of kids subjects. They're writing about divorce yep. and money and mm -hmm. hunger mm -hmm. and all kinds of mm -hmm. big, yep. painful. Yeah, and they're writing intelligently about yes. it. Yes, yeah, and sure. their word choices. Awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Katie. It's now, Katie, did you have you're in the, are you in the same uh, same what, grade level, but different? We have like what different teams. Different call, kids. What do you call them? Houses. 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 Yeah. Are you in the same house? No. So we're both ELA. So there's one ELA per house. So we're on the same grade. We all we both teach seventh grade, but uh -huh. she has separate kids and I have separate kids. Okay. So was your topic, your theme, thematic top, yes, topic the same? We all we yeah we have the same curriculum. Yeah. So we kind of we all take it and go our own ways a little bit. Like we put our twist on it. Um, but I did the where I'm from poem, um, and we did like a whole um, collection of poems that the kids yeah. wrote. So this is and where this I'm is from. Both of our <laughs> we love poetry. <laughs> it's our favorite time of the year. Yeah. Yeah, it's wonderful really to hear. Yeah. It's and I just, I tell the kids about how I got into poetry. I mean, I was always, I didn't have confidence in middle school. You know, bullying takes that away from you. And, and your teachers start to kind of bring it back out of you a little bit. Like when you, when you write and they say, wow, the way you said that, the way you, the way you put that. And you're like, what do you mean? Did I do something yeah. wrong? They're yeah. like, no, I love how you said that. I'm like, Oh, okay. A compliment. And telling the kids that and just motivating them and saying, wow, that, that's awesome. They're like, it is? Yeah. It just kind of like... It's cool. It's, it's, it's awesome to see. That's the best part of our yeah. job, getting to see yeah. that, getting yeah. to see the joy. When it's yeah. said correctly, it just jumps out yeah, at you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I see that with poetry. I tell the kids, I'm like, you're probably going to dread this at first, and then it's going to be your favorite time of the year because it's, you get to write about what you wrong. Yeah. There's not... There are rules with poetry, yeah. depending on what kind you write, but with free verse, I mean, you just take it and yeah. you go with it. with it. They like the And they love it. <laughs> yep. They do. So I have one you too. You have if, a poem. If Wonderful. you want to hear it. Okay, so um, I am from writing, 
from countless nights spent wearing out my pencil's lead, writing fantasies that will never come true. I am from books, from summer days spent hidden away under the cool shade of a maple tree, flower blossoms gently drifting by, light and free. I am from the beach, and diving into the foamy, tumbling waves, the sun beating down on my back. I am from desks and classrooms, from school and teachers, from learning. I am from biking with friends, laughing obnoxiously as we ride smoothly along the freshly paved roads. I am from my family always supporting me, from my dad and his wild vacation ideas and always wanting to spend time with us, from my mom with her crazy siblings and her delicious food and always caring about me, from my siblings who always make me happy. I am from skiing and swimming. I am from buttered lobster and salty corn on summer nights, from my friends who are always there for me, from days filled with sadness and tears, from nights where I am truly happy. I am from care. I'm from care. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great closure. Yeah. So, uh, those, that's a wonderful prompt, mm -hmm. where I'm from. Yeah. Yeah. And you got, they get a good response from that. I think it's their favorite. This was the one that I had all the kids submit to the Poetry Without Paper, yeah. we use it as an assignment. And I say, this is your easiest 95, all 95%. All you have to do is write the poem. And submit it. And submit it. And I go around and I see them hit submit, and we get winners. Yeah. You, you get and this, literally this winners. This is her creation, and I loved it, and I went along with it. So I make the kids submit just like she has her kids. I got this from somewhere. I don't know if it was from Ray, um, another teacher that we teach with, or just, I but don't I know. But I love the idea. Yeah. Of, I love having them all submit to Poetry yeah. Without Paper, and I'm like, who cares yeah. if you win or lose? You just submitted a poem yeah. to a contest, right. and you're what, 11, 12 yeah. years old? And you're getting published. I didn't start writing poetry till college, and I tell them that. I'm like, look at you guys, and I think that just makes well, them We have proud. students who say, I say, uh, uh, how many times have you written a poem? She oh, I just had to do it. <laughs> And you're now you're, you're in second place. Yeah, but I, what what inspired you? I had to do it. <laughs> sure. Cross the banner. And, and, but, it, but it's still good. Maybe they'll maybe they'll continue and they'll love it. Oh, I think so. I think are, some of them will. Are yeah. Are boys and so. girls as interested as he as yes both equally? Yeah, think? I think so. I think at first it doesn't matter what gender they are. There are some students who. Mm -hmm. They aren't confident in ELA. They're not right. confident in writing, so right. they automatically assume I'm not going to like poetry. Right. I'm not good at poetry. I'm not. The, well, they think it's a little too flowery. I think at well, first. I think for boys, yeah. it's, it's it's almost tragic. That gets beaten out of of you culturally. I'm so when, glad you said that. By the time you're out of high school, uh, you see these stats about what kids yeah. like when they're in first, second, yeah. third, fourth right. grade, yeah. and they love poetry. They like math, and then. Boys hate yeah. it by the time they get to But they love music, and that's one thing I wanted to mention. And it's mention. universal. The music is how we get them engaged. You asked how we get kids engaged yes. for this unit. We start off, we have them print down their lyrics of whatever favorite song they listen to, as long as it's G-rated. That is the biggest stipulation. Mm -hmm. That can't be one of the clean versions. It's got to be totally, you know, no blocked out where you can actually understand what would be the word in right. there. It's got to be a G-rated song. They analyze it. They identify the theme. So they have to really look at the lyrics. And as I say to them, I ask them, how many people like poetry? You're right. Most of the boys don't. And a few of the girls who get up. <laughs> it's a nasty boys, word. A few boys. But yeah. then when you say, who likes music? Who listens to music? Everyone. Everybody's hands pop up. I said, well, guess what, guys? You're listening to poetry. Bob Dylan. Hey. He got the he got the prize finally for being a <laughs> lyricist, but a poet, a poet. Yeah. Right. And and to me, when they have to listen to their music, all of a sudden they're saying, "Hey, I I found a hyperbole in here. Yeah. Oh wait a minute, I found a metaphor." And they really start to listen to their music, which I mm -hmm. think is very cool because I think that's what they need too. to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they need to. Because some kids are saying, "I don't like what that's saying," but you like the music. Well, now you understand why it's important to listen not just to the instrumental, not right. just to the beat, yeah. but the rhythm of the words. Exactly. What's the word? And word then you can get them to see that and, and hear then, that when you're reading. Yep. Right. So to, that's the hook. And, exactly. And, and a lot of the kids all of a sudden, and then they make a video on symbolism, focused on symbolism, yeah. at the end of the unit as an assessment. Yeah. And they just, Boston Marathon, when it happened, I just yeah. happened to assign it on that Friday. John, oh, they came back and they were showing it. I had um, Dr. Sapphire and Principal Lucy at the time, who was a principal at O'Malley, 
they came in. I didn't. I didn't edit. I didn't. I didn't look at these films before. Right. We were showing them. Oh, almost all of them were focused on the Boston Marathon and the graphics that they got from the internet yeah. right. and put to the music that the songs that they chose. It was it just it. It. We had tears. All of us were yeah. having tears, and. Um, Dr. Sapphire even asked us to have some students come in to the school committee and we showed some of those videos. Oh, it was very good. it was very cool because the kids realized that what they were doing was was important, right. you yeah. know, the message. I think, yeah, yeah, that's wonderful that you can relate it to music because yeah, exactly. it yep. is poem. Although yep. I guess right. the stuff that rhymes most, uh, a lot of the rap is probably not yeah. not, not gonna get into your no. uh, into your no, G no, category no. too often. No. But it's but, good when you have a reluctant learner who's like, I'm not doing this. I hate poetry, I won't yeah. do this. And I'm like, well, do you like music? Mm -hmm. They're like, what? I'm like, do you like music? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like music. Okay, well then think of it that way. You're writing a song right now. You know, it doesn't have to rhyme, doesn't and it? Have, and it works. And it mm -hmm. works, yeah. They're like, okay, what's the song about? I'm like, whatever you want it to be about. Yeah, you said, uh, you used a good term there, reluctant. Yeah. Relu reluctant <laughs> learner. Yeah. Reluctant and that's, learner. that's not There's rare. There's a lot. <laughs> that's not rare. How, what do you say to someone, uh, besides, you know, do you like music? How do you, how do you get through to them? I mean, I, like I said, I tell, I tell my personal story, and I think a lot of the kids can kind of relate to that mm -hmm. because... At first, I was like, I don't like poetry. I, mean, I don't want to write poetry. So I, I kind of delve into my story and, and, and show them that. And then I talk about the music. I mean, when they get to listen to their own song and that they chose and pick it apart and, and look at it like that, I just think that all of a sudden they're like, okay, I'm interested. It Let's empowers them. You, you were both, when you were undergraduates, you were both English majors. Right. Yes. Did you both write? Yes. My, Did, my concentration was writing, yeah. What came first, your desire to write or your desire to teach writing? Right. Right. Yeah. right. I've been writing poetry since I was in seventh, sixth grade. I mean, I, my dream was in eighth grade with my friend Patty Quinton was to publish a poetry book. Yeah. Yep. We had it. I still have my volume of poems. I still have them. It's all about the Vietnam War. It's about poverty. It's about not being understood. and. Then did you were a, I a didn't poet start, as well? I didn't start writing poetry until college, um, but I always had a diary, and that was like very liberating for me because I could just write what I couldn't say yeah. out loud. You so know, I couldn't. Yeah, it's easy. Because I wasn't heard when I was, it's you know, much younger. Easier. So yeah. we were tortured souls at seventh grade we and eighth were. grade. I mean, I tell the kids, don't think that you're any different than I was at this age. I mean. Fashions were different. The news was different, but not a really. A lot of what it you're going more, through. Right? Oh, Everybody. The more is, things change. Yeah, the more they more stay the same. same. Yeah. And yeah. I think middle school is traumatizing yeah. for a decent amount of people. Yeah. And that's yeah. I vividly remember my middle school experience. So I just it's, and we both went to a private school. We so didn't go to a public school. It's easy to teach middle school. Yeah. Well, not easy. I shouldn't say easy, but I can relate to them, and I remind them yeah. of that too. I'm like, guys, I remember when yeah. I was your age. I remember when I was in your shoes. Yeah. So, yeah. I want to ask uh, if you can give me a couple of examples of writing and reading assignments. Now you have already, mm -hmm. uh, in, a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a way, uh, but that have really worked. If you assign some reading that you can think of every semester mm -hmm. or recently that really worked with the kids, uh, Teresa? Actually, I think the global read that we're doing yeah. now um, uh, it's the Gro Global Read Aloud. It's a program. Um, I'm not familiar with that. It, it, global Read the Aloud? The Global Read Aloud. It was something that was turned on to us by um, one of the teachers that we teach with, um, Lorraine Davis, and she got it from someone else, I think. And it's a program that, I don't know if it's been around for a while. I think they've done it a few times. Yeah. Everybody reads the same book. Like, they don't have a book in front of right. them. The kids don't. But it's across, I mean, it's in other countries. It's in international. It's national, international. So Global have, Read Aloud. So they have a list each year, and it changes each yeah. year. So right now, um, oh, I know in our our whole school is reading one book, but yeah. I know that there are other leveled well, books. Right. So well, what is your school reading now? Refugee. By Alan Gratz, G-R-A-T-Z. Yep. It is amazing. It really is. Right. So, the, so they download the book? Um, or they or they don't. just read it on? So we play yeah. the audio or yeah. um, teachers read it out yeah. loud to the students. Uh, the audio is on Hoopla. Which yeah. 
I thought was going to be kind of challenging for some yeah. students, but I think it's very relaxing. They can put their head yeah. down, but they're actually listening because when we have discussions about it, yeah. So they don't they don't see it. They don't have. They it. don't see they it, which I know for me that yeah. was hard at first. Yeah. But yeah. I think they kind of enjoy it for this. But I think it's very important to also. First, I was picturing it. Right. An some people yeah. read it aloud themselves, yeah. but I do, I, the audio. I do the audio that they we have, got on Hoopla. They have characters. Yeah. And, and yeah, the voices. You can hear the different voices. There's yeah. three specific characters, <laughs> and they're all like this age group, 12, 13 11, years. 12, yeah. yeah. And they're from three different eras. One's from 1939, from Germany, and he's Jewish, and he is escaping to Cuba. One is from Cuba, who is, it's 1994. Yeah. Yep. And they're escaping to U.S. Florida. And then there is the Syrian boy and his family in 2015, and they are escaping to Germany. It's, it's very a fantastic. Yeah, and each book. chapter um, and the, the, is for each character, and yep. it just rotates. And it goes and were, to the were, journey. The students respond well. They, oh, they, they're, they're journaling. Loving it. And, it up, yeah. yeah, are yours journaling? Mine, mine's um, journaling every Friday or. Yeah, I've had them can. reflect a little bit yeah. about that, and we also have discussions yeah. too. How, just, how consistent is the reading level in the different classes? Say in your own class. Oh, like is it? Or, um, is, is that is there a problem? Of course, if this is oral, right? Uh, that's not a problem there. But I was wondering how much of a problem uh, variation of reading for like lower for. and higher readers. Yeah. I would say it's like I would say it's probably on the lower end, so that because but it's, my uh, nephew who went to Hingham or who, who goes to Hingham, he's in sixth grade. That was their summer read. It's so tough. he went from I, fifth because grade when to you have grade. a lexile level, it doesn't. Yeah. So sometimes it takes into consideration like vocab and the writing. How difficult is it to read? But then the content. But so I yeah. think it's easy to read, but the content is is yeah. difficult to deal with. But I think that these kids are dealing with it because yeah. it's relevant. It's I have, I, I made a mistake. I didn't look at our clock for a few minutes, oh. and now I'm out of time. So <laughs> I'm, very, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very. I'm uh, very. Reluctant to end the show, but I have to, or it'll be ended <laughs> sure, for me. Sure, that was very interesting. That's why I got yeah. carried away. I wasn't paying attention yeah, to okay. the technical <laughs> aspect. Thank you very much, Teresa Danner and Catherine Crosby, Thank for you. being on the Writer's <laughs> Block. I really appreciate it. Very interesting to me, and I'm sure it was interesting to our audience. Yeah. Thanks for coming Good. over. Thank, thank you for you. having us. Yeah, thank you. I want to thank you in television land, too, for being with us on the Writer's <laughs> Block. If you've learned something from Ms. Crosby and Ms. Danaher about teaching and inspiring reading and writing, then the writer's block has done its job. Thanks for being with us, and I hope to see you again next week on the writer's block. Good night.